I watch. I'm like dying right With now. Paul faking his hundred and two degree <laughs> <fever. laughs> you, you have you real piece proof. Of shit. Thanks for tuning in to the latest episode of Rise, Grind, Repeat. In today's episode, we talk to Paul and Jacob. I met Paul by actually selling him my motorcycle, and it turns out they're working on a business that uh, helps veterans overcome PTSD. Let's hop right in. Yeah, I appreciate you guys coming out. So, I mean, the reason why I'm excited is uh, interesting. Uh, you bought motorcycle from us. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to do with my hands. You're good. <laughs> that was a good reference. <laughs> Actually, it's the first time, but that was good. At first, I was like, wait, what is he doing? And then... <laughs> and so, yeah, you bought a motorcycle and uh, just started talking. And a lot of what, I mean, you're saying, the the mental side of things, the just everything you were saying was awesome. And so just wanted to connect and hear more of what you guys are doing. Um, just figure some things out. It sounds like you guys are just starting. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we just love to hear more about it. Are you guys both working on this together or... Yeah, it all came about through a program, Save a Warrior, um, which is technically a war detox, what they call it. But I found out it's pretty much suicide prevention um, program that uh, we went through at different times. But um, we connected actually through Facebook um, in a, a group, Healing Voices Live Tribe, and uh, found out he was actually alumni of Save a Warrior. And uh, we just connected and wanted to give back like that's one thing that save a word does it gets the thing under the thing which for me discovered I was alcoholic in it and I was before save a warrior I was doing all the things that the VA wanted us to do you know went to um, operation mend was a part of the wounded warrior project doing all these things but it just kept like cycling back around Mm -hmm. and it was just never um still had those suicidal thoughts about, you know, that ideology and, um, going through save a warrior, like they practice meditation. Um, it's the backbone of it, warrior meditation, which we want to, you know, give to the fellow veterans. Cause that's a practice that you can put in. So it's not about the tools. It's about the practice of what goes on. And we're, you know, I mean, not to be prideful or whatever, but we're the examples of that because we came from, you know, this just, inner torment for me was like, even on the outside, like if you met me when I was in California before I moved here, I had the wife, the house, new, brand new daughter. And still there were times when I'd sit at home and be like, what the hell am I doing here? Yeah. Like, this is not enough. And that's where, um, this self discovery, this understanding and connection with higher power, believing something bigger than yourself. You know, for me, it's God, whatever you want to call it. I mean, it doesn't matter what they're called, but it's like that would go away. And I found that I had to find that, you know, in myself and through recovery, I have 15 months of sobriety. Um, and it's, it's huge because it 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 brought me places where I never thought possible. You know what I mean? And then like this being able to accept things as they are and doing all that, that was just a big part of my life. And now it's like, I want to do something for others, right? Like if I, to get out of my own stuff, I, I have to be there for someone else and I have to give away what I want the most. And through this process, we've, you know, see there's a missing for the veterans here. They're all trying to do <clears throat> what the VA asked them and all that. And me, I was just dropped from several programs that I was doing everything I need to do, but I'm back and forth from California here right now. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's like that struggle is real. And it's, if I didn't have the practice I had, I could see where, you know, the people that go in the VA and they're all pissed off and they, and then, you know, we look crazy. It's like, yeah, dude, mm-hmm. I'll look crazy. Like you come try to put a straight jacket on me. I'll look crazy. <laughs> That's why I didn't want to yeah. tell them, you know, all of the truth about it because I heard they'll lock you up and do all this. And I'm like, you lock me up, dude. You, I'm going to be there forever because I'm going to be fighting it the whole time. Yeah. So that's the, that's the warrior in me, but, hmm. uh, through warrior meditation and being able to go through these three phases, it's like, I can come back to center. I can see that that's like a thought or whatever, and then be able to let it go. But without that practice, it's like, we're crazy. We're out there. You know what I mean? But so we want to give that back to 
as many people as we can. We want to reach as many people and give them this simple practice. I mean, some of us get up making your bed and meditating. And it's mm-hmm. like, if you're not doing that, then, you know, Foundation. yeah. And, uh, we do, you know, I've got a lot of healing through yoga as well. Like the practice of moving our body and just being okay with being okay. You know what I mean? Not having to like live up to anybody's expectations or whatever, but just learning to, to be ordinary, which is not easy for someone who, you know, like us who went through war and did all this. And it's like, for me, it was a lot of like, when people would say something like, dude, you don't know me. Like, you don't even want to go there with me. And before when I was drinking and all that, that would all come out. Like I wouldn't cry unless I was drinking. I wouldn't release any emotions or anything unless I was drinking. And now I get to feel those feelings sober and be around a group of loving men. That's like the initiation from death and killing and dying to initiation of, of empathy and love. And, uh, that's what the program gave me. Nice. And so, I mean, what was your experience going through it? Kind of the same thing or what did you go through the VA route? Didn't really see success. And Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I, uh, it took a while to get to the VA. It took having a friend, uh, this is back when I still lived in Indiana before, uh, a few of my buddies, we all got out, uh, out of the army and wanted to move somewhere together. Mm -hmm. So once they got out, we all moved here. But uh, I was in Indiana and I had this friend who worked at the VA and she worked with uh, Vietnam veterans. And she just kept telling me, because me and my buddy would joke like we were depressed, me and another friend that were out of the army. And we really were, but we just also found it funny how depressed we were. (laughs) (laughs) So we joke around about it, just like really morbid jokes all the time, which is Mm kind of normal uh, with army folk and military folk. But, uh, She's just like, you could tell that it saddened her to hear it and just kept encouraging me and my buddy also to go to the VA and Mm -hmm. get help and just kept pushing for that till I finally did because she just kept saying, she's like, yeah, I get Vietnam vets in all the time and they have trouble proving that anything service connected and they're not able to get help. And they're in a place where they've been struggling for so long that they usually can't even afford to get any help. So it's like a huge uphill battle at that point. So she's just like, go in now. And finally I did, and it was God awful. <laughs> First thing I said to the doctor is like, I don't want any pills. I don't want to be on antidepressants mm-hmm. or any of that crap. I want to like do something more natural. I left there with two new prescriptions. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Uh, right. ne- next time I went in, these are making me feel like a zombie. I got a new one. And the next one, it's like, I'm too tired. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, here's some Ritalin having trouble sleeping, take the sleeping pill too. And it just kept being like, we've got a fucking bottled up solution yeah. for your problem. And any problem, so, here's, the, here's something new today, just throw yeah. your mouth, pop it. Yeah. Is that pretty much? Yeah, and sometimes it'd be transitioning from one to the next, like with the antidepressants or anti-anxiety, but usually it's just like, let's stack on this other thing to just, you still have this symptom over here? Let's, let's see yeah. if we can just fix that symptom. And yeah. it, yeah, none of it I liked. They they did say I could be in therapy, but they only had an ability to put me in group therapy. And I was like, I don't want to talk to a bunch of motherfuckers <laughs> who are just whining about their shit. And it's like, I was infantry. I was like, I don't want to, I want to hear somebody <laughs> talking about how a mortar hit their base somewhere far away. Like, I didn't care. Uh, <laughs> so didn't go that route. I finally got him to let me talk to a therapist. And she was like, maybe 20... 23, 24, Mm -hmm. looked like she's fresh out of school and she looked like she would validate herself if she could get me to cry while we were in there. So I was like, no, that's not happening (laughs) anyways. But uh, yeah, just didn't didn't care for her and just the tonality and the Mm -hmm. like questions she was even crying at didn't seem to be the actual issue for me. Like she's asking about like, oh, the time I got blown up or the friends that died and like none of that was like what I see as the actual problem. They're looking for this like what catalyzed the trauma that one experience that one event that was like god awful but for a lot of people that i know and myself included it's not that it's the like compound effect of everything Mm -hmm. and then you add in all the crap from childhood because look at who joins the military it's a lot of people with like less than great childhood experiences uh then just stack on a year of taking antibiotics every day like my thought is fucking up your gut biome yeah uh which causes anxiety and stress like it causes inflammation throughout the body and we're eating crap food in a high stress environment every day like wondering if you'll get hoping actually hoping you'll get shot that day uh shot at because that's that's what i signed up for yeah that was the fun stuff uh but the va thinks that getting shot at was my trauma which you ask anybody i was in with smiling ear to ear like finally yeah yeah uh 
but yeah, it's, it's odd. And then you, you come back and everything's just so fast paced, you know, that like, you're like, okay, yeah, you got it. Like friends die, but you don't even have time to grieve it. Like, it's just like, okay, well we got three patrols tomorrow. So let's yeah. keep that going. And then you come back and you start to like, everybody starts to drink and celebrate, but then you quickly start to see and not even recognize without the hindsight now that like, mm -hmm. that's when people would start crying and stuff. Everybody's getting drunk like crazy and everybody's starting to cry. Like everybody's like when they're drunk at times, just like this dude, this night, this dude, this yeah. night, just talking about how things aren't right. Uh, missing, uh, friends that we lost. And would you say that these are more truths? Like basically it's being hidden and the alcohol just basically as you start drinking it just comes out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And then uh cause like I I kept a secret. Like I couldn't mm -hmm. sleep at night. I went and complained about not being able to sleep at night, but I didn't say why. Yeah. Like I, I kept going into like uh the aid station and like, yo, I I need something for sleep. I just I cannot fall asleep. And everybody was drinking themselves to sleep. So yeah. the, the truth was they can't sleep, they're not okay mentally. So they start drinking like crazy to just suppress that problem and make it be okay for a while. And then can't sleep, so they started giving us what, NyQuil, telling us to take NyQuil and as soon as I stopped working start taking Tylenol PM. Uh and then Benadryl, just and cycle through that stuff. Down, yeah. So that that was the solution for that, but it's also because because we were trained not to complain about stuff. Yeah, like I mean, you injure yourself, you're now the asshole who's injured and doesn't have to do PT yeah. and you're not yeah. functioning with the unit. So you're like a cast out until like you start actually saying you're fine. Yep. So you're pushing through broken ankles, you're pushing through whatever, just so that you're not that dude. Yeah. So it's the same just mentality with mental health, especially with that because you're like, oh, I could lose my job. They're gonna send me away and we did. We were not nice to people who claimed to have PTSD. Really? They were cast outs. They were mentally weak. We would make fun of them. Like wow. that that's how it was in the military. We we it was horrible. Like even in basic training, like people who were suicidal, we made fun of them for being suicidal. Yeah. Like people actually like taking razor blades to their arms and wow. slashing themselves. Wow. We'd save them and then make fun of them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's cause you don't want that in your environment because that's not safe during deployment. So it kind of makes sense. Yep. But it's also got awful. Yeah. Uh, uh, do you think that there's a different approach that could be taken that kind of, I mean, I see the mental toughness. Like, I mean, you gotta, it's gonna be 10 X once you get out there, like, you know, across the country. And so it's like, I, I hear that you gotta be tough, but is there maybe a different approach that still instills that mental toughness, but without that aspect to where it's almost like, I mean, I grew up playing baseball and it's, it's the same mentality. It's like, even if you're hurt, you're not going to tell your, you're hurt. Cause then it's just like after the game, after practicing, go back in the locker room. It's like, Oh, who are like, you know what I mean? You're just gonna get made fun of. And so it's like the, the mentality side is, and it's, is there a way to create that mental toughness without keeping people's emotions bottled in to then later expose, you know what I mean? I believe so. I, it's, I don't think they're going to change it because it's the what happens in boot camp is they break you from your primary group so there's a a whole breaking down and rebuilding of that but through um i mean mental toughness comes through meditation it comes through you know being you know courage right courage is not the absence of fear it's an acknowledging a fear and working through it so they teach just blind obedience and i don't believe that's um that's good for the for the person the individual mm -hmm. you can create a space a safe space where they could where they could talk about their fears and what's going on and then work through them because i mean death is a fear it's like but it's never addressed really it's like we're out there i remember 9 11 happened when i was in uh, my tech core which is I was a technical rating. I was a fire controlman in charge of the weapon systems on the ship. And when that happened, all the people were like screaming, like, I didn't, I didn't sign up for this. I just want to, I just want to college money. And I'm looking around, I'm like, holy crap, I'm going to war with these guys <laughs> that are nothing. I mean, we witnessed something happening. Right. But then they're like freaking out. And I was, that was me. I was like, okay, well, and I grew, you know, I grew up in a small farming community. So we were yeah. tough country boys. Like it's like, whatever, you know, but, um, that, I don't think that was even addressed. Like that was a huge thing that happened that they just kind of, whatever, all these people are freaking out and they just tell, you know, whatever. But, um, there's just part, I, I was talking with someone too, and it's like to get the mission accomplished, they don't have time to go and address every 
experience that happened. So that's what is there. But there can be something like Save a Warrior for the people getting out. They do something, transition assistance program, whatever they teach you, all this stuff or whatever. But it's like they don't address the issue that there's trauma that happened no matter what. And that's why people who are getting out of the military or even like they'll they'll kill themselves right before they have everything set up. They're, they have a whole job lined up, all this stuff, but they're leaving they're leaving their family that, mm-hmm. that, and they're leaving them in harm's way. And they believe that they can save them or whatever. If they were there, a lot of the regret and is like, these people died, but I wasn't there. So they were that, they hold on to the fact that they died because of them. And then they end up drinking, sedating, whatever they do, sex, money, drugs, whatever. Yeah. And just avoiding looking back at that incident and that's what they call stuck point that's what in in pts ptsg is what i call post-traumatic stress growth um there's stuck points that you need to work out with someone else like they need to because i went through it up in uh ucla and uh there were beliefs that i had that they were real and then they'll manifest in reality because that's what's going on in our subconscious and then the world gets small and then it's like i'm not here for anybody anyway why am i here Mm -hmm. and then bam complete the mission so there's definitely a solution, um, but the VA gets money for everybody that joins. They get like ten thousand, fifteen thousand dollars once we join in, and so every month they get that, and they don't want to. It's already invested, so they can't give it back. Yeah, you know, and that's that's the fight. Really, is um, is life worth money? Like that's that. You, it's insane. I mean, so is the VA a government entity or is it a private? Government, yeah. Government? Mm-hmm. Gotcha. I mean, it's almost like, I mean, just the whole opioid crisis. I, I mean, everything going on now, it's crazy that people get paid to prescribe it. And it's like, I mean, I, I had surgery on my elbow and it's like, I got so many more pills than I should have. I mean, it's it's, it's a whole different story, but um, I mean, it, it, it's crazy that there is financial gain to put someone through something, whether it's going to be right like or wrong. Like, it's just human life is not then regarded as like valuable it's just more of how much are you worth like how much you can put in our pockets and that's that i think is where the i mean the system is broken i don't know much about the va system or anything like that but that right there is once you start putting a dollar amount on someone things will get done that isn't it's not for the benefit of that individual Mm -hmm. i I mean what you just said now i can totally see where this whole uh, now i see why i mean i'm from yuma where there's a huge military base there and just all my high school buddies went on to the military people that have been there it's like you never hear anything good about the VA. I mean, and after hearing this, I mean, you can kind of see why. And so is this pain point here is what got you guys started on what you're thinking about doing? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's, uh, really get into that. Like he said, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. I was, once I was out, I was looking for any distraction for a while. It was healthy. It was running Mm -hmm. and I'd get up and run like eight miles every morning. Uh, by the time I moved out here, I had friends that thought I was like freakishly skinny. (laughs) Uh, not so much the case now. I blew, I blew up my knee about a month after I moved out here and had to have two knee surgeries and just quit with the running at that point. And it went right back to drinking like crazy Mm -hmm. and then just other drugs and crap and just looking for any girl just to like be with me that night so that I didn't have to be alone in bed and like in my head because just like being in my head was the real fear. It was just anytime I was alone with my thoughts just sucked. And it was when you're alone with your thoughts the most is probably when you're about to be going to sleep. Uh, and that just slowly over time, just kept getting worse and worse, you know, until the point that I got to be suicidal Mm -hmm. and thank God for my dog that night. My roommates were out of town for uh, Christmas and I just like pulled out my nine and I, well, 40 and (laughs) thought about just shooting myself. I just didn't want to be around anymore. It seemed like such a struggle and I was pissed off because it seemed like I had to be here like for my family. Like they, like they seemed like a burden that I had to stay alive just to not upset my family. Like that's the only thing. And then my dog pushed her way up to me and just like wouldn't leave my lap or my side and I just bawled my eyes out sold the gun within the next few days because I was scared to have it at the house and just decided at that point I was like okay well I have insomnia every night instead of just laying here and just dwelling in my thoughts and being stuck in this I'm going to start looking for solutions and I started looking up like alternative health and reading about like I found transcendental meditation went and like met with that dude he's I think it cost like 
800 bucks or something to learn it. So I was like, well, fuck that. I'll find some other type of meditation. (laughs) Um, And then I, yeah, I found Headspace, started meditating, uh, trying that out for a while. It didn't fully stick because I wasn't extremely consistent with it. I tried out acupuncture. I started trying out all kinds of things and just, I I knew that the problem couldn't be new since there's been like warriors forever. And just, I see it in all my buddies that I was in the army with. So it's like, this isn't new. There's, there's gotta be something that they used to do. Otherwise you'd hear about it a lot more. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, that's eventually when I found Jake Clark, who is the founder of save a warrior, a video of him talking about how it's not new and there were rituals before and how that's what he created in his program. Then I go over to save a Warrior's site and it's, it's maybe like two thirty, two forty five like in the morning at this point. And I, I see it, I look through it and I see a lot of language on it from, uh, this makes it sound like he's been through a personal development program I'd went through. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, I can trust this dude. Yeah. Uh, then I go ahead and I start filling out the application and they let you, they have an open-ended question there at the end. Like, I don't know what the wording was like. It's pretty much like what's going on in your life. Yeah. And I just, unloaded like tears falling all over my keyboard really? unloaded on this and then as soon as I got done with it I sat there for a while looking at the submit button scared to hit it because I didn't feel worthy to submit I didn't feel worthy to go to Malibu for a five and a half day retreat like uh, somebody needs it more than me I only had one deployment like somebody like somebody's missing a leg that needs it somebody yeah. like lost more friends it was just like I wasn't worthy enough uh, finally I just got to it in my head is like, okay, well you thought about killing yourself recently, dude. Yeah. Like you don't have a choice. You, you have to hit submit. Uh, you have to like take new actions. You have to change something. So I hit it. And within 15 minutes, I got a call. This is the middle of the night. And the dude who called me, I know now he was a full-time police officer at the time and running cohorts for save a warrior. Wow. Like every time doing tons of work for them. So wow. probably working at least 80 plus hours a week. Hours a day. <laughs> yeah. Like I don't think he slept yeah. and he calls me in the middle of the night. Like, Hey, Hey brother, this is Hags from uh save yeah. a warrior. How you doing? Uh, so immediately I just felt love right there. I was like, Oh shit. And he assured me that I'm going to get into a cohort. He's like, I looked over your stuff really briefly. We're going to get you in. I'll talk to you in the next couple of days about like actually scheduling a time. But he just wanted to make sure I was okay that night, which like baffled me. I, I mean, did that, did that entire like, tra- like communication, did that just feel like a weight lifted off your shoulder? Oh, like- absolutely. It like, I, I got that people cared. Like that I was worthy and that like this was like he even qualified himself like that he was in the military and all that. So I was like, okay, so somebody else like me has gotten help from this one. And two, there's people out there that care about me and love me uh, that don't even know me. So like there's, there's good out there and like made me seem slightly worthy at that point. There was still work to do to get there completely, but... Yeah, that That's that cool. changed things so much. Like I, I kind of had this knowing that things would be okay at that point. That's cool. So I mean, it sounds like both of you guys went through something that is outside of the norm. And I mean, it's it's not here pills. Here's this. Like check this box off. It's just more the mental. It's exercising the mind. It's just I mean, getting out there. I mean, from what it sounds like. And so I would love to hear more of what you, like. I can totally see everything you guys have gone through. Now, what is this leading into what you guys are trying to create? So what we see is a missing with a lot of these programs is everybody from all over goes to them and then they go home and you're still in contact like on Facebook and stuff Mm -hmm. with everybody you went through with, but there's not a local thing going on. There are some organizations that are local like that, like mission continues there's there's a few of them and they just go on runs and stuff but they don't really get deep into like mindfulness or anything like that that like we think actually helps yeah so what we're creating i'm uh i'm in talks with two yoga studios right now to start teaching warrior meditation at them that's also just to build a relationship and bridge a gap uh so that they that'll be a free class. We'll start getting veterans into there and I'll start helping them out with some marketing to get veterans in and then seeing if afterwards they want some more marketing services, but that one I'll give for free uh, just to help them out because they'll be allowing us a space to help veterans. And then uh, beyond that, just developing a program and developing relationships with them to have some uh, veteran yoga programs going throughout throughout the state. Nice. That's cool. And then next step is 
getting them all like collaborating and doing a big fundraiser for like Save a Warrior because that's the catalyst. That's cool. It's what got us to where we are and has helped hundreds of other veterans. So, uh, really just seeing how we can pay it forward like that. That's really cool. Um, and so how have the talks been with Yoga Studios? Uh, I've got two interested. Uh, one of them, we just need to nail down a date and a uh, time for it going forward, which I'll be having that conversation this week. And the other one, I uh, just want some more details and info since it was just some Facebook messages. Mm-hmm. But uh, I have a relationship with them anyway, so they, nice. they, they want to do it. Uh, they've done a fundraiser for Saul in the past. Uh, we just got to get them the information they need and get it, get it rolling. Nice. So then, so basically you guys would be creating the classes. Are you guys both, do you need a certification at all or is it just knowing? No, the cool thing about it is, uh, you know, I said transcendental meditations, like a thousand bucks. They paid for that when they first created Save a Warrior and they, they had everybody getting trained in that. But they always had that problem where it's like, this is a meditation. Like, why would you make somebody pay you $1,000 for a meditation that they can just do on their own forever? Yeah. Uh, So they developed warrior meditation and trademarked it. And they did that because the only rule about it is you can't sell it. They give it away as much as you want. That's sweet. But you can't sell it ever. Uh, That is cool. Yeah. And so... Once you guys get this, how are you guys going to get people in? Do you guys have a plan on, on, I guess, your outreach and how you would get classes full? A few. I've got a, I've got a veteran buddy. He's got this, uh, which I have to talk to him more about this. I'm sure he'll support. He's got this page. You might be a veteran if it's like a ton of funny memes and stuff. But he's got like 100,000 followers. Oh, wow. and A lot out here in Arizona. And also just running some Facebook ads to uh, storytelling talks and stuff that we'll be doing going forward but uh yeah so facebook some facebook ads that like are geared towards veterans yeah stuff they'll find funny and then uh starting a video series with a few buddies around a veteran with all those stereotypes all the douchiness Mm -hmm. the short shorts and everything drinking all of it uh going through a journey finding holistic health and in that we'll be going to yoga studios and just different places and giving shout outs to the businesses but cool. it's something that veterans will find funny and connect with because each episode starts with getting trashed <laughs> uh, <laughs> and just all the typical funny stuff so there's there's a few ways that we're looking to get eyes on and then reaching out to some uh, other veteran influencers too I was gonna say, yeah. I mean, just just getting. I mean, that video series. That's that's huge. I mean, even. I mean, most people get stuck on, hey, let's make a thirty second like commercial or spot like storytelling is what it is. Yeah, that's what's gonna. I mean, it'll get the ball rolling and it'll just continue to grow and then all of a sudden it'll just be something that I mean just gets legs. Um, yeah, it's. Have you had anyone go through any any of it yet? Uh, like from you guys personally. Me teaching word meditation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've taught it to a lot of people, a lot of friends. I've, me and my girlfriend do it nightly. Really? Yeah. I'm so even getting other people that have been through it on something like this and just like, what was it to explain? What was it before? What was the process and how has it helped getting more and more people through that? I mean, I think that would be huge because one, I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be easy to connect with other veterans because that's where, what you guys are. That's, that's, that's going to be huge. But then it's, if you can get other people that are basically on that fence where it's like, eh, just right before they hit that submit button, just like, you know what I mean? Just kind of on that fence, getting some of those videos that just like resonates different demographics, different whatever it is and just get how it's helped. And I mean, that's outside of that, you can use the the episodes to get like just some of the attention and be like, okay, that's cool. We, we, we have someone's attention. Now you can hit them with the testimonial type of stuff and that's where it's just like, okay, you got the attention with the entertainment. Here's a testimonial to actually get them into the yoga studio. I think it'd be huge. Oh, yeah. That's part of the goal with a a funnel I just kind of designed that I have to finish building out, which is to give warrior meditation away online. Mm -hmm. But it's all linked to alumni telling their story. And have you read, uh, you know, Russell Brunson? Yeah. Okay. So, you know, Expert Secrets, the layout for, like, Mm -hmm. the Epiphany Bridge script? Uh, Using that. So, like, teaching people that and, like, having them tell their story using that so that they get like the internal struggle and all that and it's different people from the organization so like you said different demographics mm-hmm. different people will connect plus like 10 people could tell their story and I'm only going to connect with maybe one of That's, them just yeah. from one little thing so the more we get the more 
it connects to that. And then all of them will be connected to this funnel that teaches warrior meditation. And then as we grow in the valley, just have more places that offer it in person also. But they'll always have it to where they know how to do it. They have a little training video and they can do it on their own. That's cool. No, I, I love the concept of just giving it away for free. I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing how, how many people just say it's, I can't give away our secrets or get it. Why it's not our why positive to give stuff away for free, but it's amazing. The opportunity, the connections, everything that it brings, um, by doing that. It's really cool. What you guys are doing it Cause it's the last couple people have been in. It's, there's a whole sense of like community building. And it's, I think that's so powerful. And it's like, I think with social media and everything like that, it's people have seen the power of I guess connecting the world together and now I think the next steps are more of just the super niche super narrow and creating groups like that where it's just connecting people using digital to connect people and then creating those local connections and I think I think what you guys are doing is, is huge um you mentioned funnels what are you, are you what are you are you using like funnelytics or or not funnelytics but uh can't even think of what click funnels. click funnels yeah 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 how's that been uh it's a learning curve I actually just got started on this one uh, last night, just briefly. I got the template and started editing some things in it. Uh, but I just built one out for another event I have going for foster kids at the end of the month. And that was the first like full on functioning funnel I'd built. And it, it was fun. It was, <laughs> it took longer than expected, but it's cause it's not it's my thing so much, but yeah, I learned a ton going through that process. What made you start doing that? That reading, reading those books, I'd listened to uh, Entrepreneur on Fire for a while. Like when oh, I was yeah. at ASU, like uh, one of the professors had us listen to a couple of those podcasts and I was like, okay, this dude's kind of cool. He's, he's a veteran too. Let's listen to some more of this. And I started noticing, oh, he asked the same exact questions every time. Uh, eventually he had Russell Brunson on. I read that book and I was like, oh, he's essentially asking the questions to get people to go through the hero's two journeys. I get it. <laughs> It's the same stuff as in this book. He just asked it in a different way. Yeah. I like it. Uh, and then just that book inspired the shit out of me. I was like, oh, I'll start a marketing company. I'll do all this. <laughs> and again, hit a lot of struggle. Like, oh, well, I actually don't know how to start a marketing company. <laughs> so I just always go back into learning mode and learning. But Is this something you're still wanting to do? Yeah. Yeah, it is. And it's I've over the last few years, I've taken a lot of courses from, like, the gurus and stuff online. Uh Dude, you just come in more and we should do a, like literally do a podcast on it like it, once a month or whatever. But what if, what are you learning and stuff like that? I would love to to connect. I mean, I'm, I'm no I wouldn't say I'm a guru or anything like that. But I mean, I've been in marketing for about eight years now and stuff like that. So, I mean, could definitely I, I would love to because one, it'd be I mean, content for us. But two, I, I, I would love to help. I mean, just yeah. Yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah. Anyone that's willing to learn, it's it's I mean. Get, get me started talking about marketing you can't even shut up so Dude, i geek out on this stuff <laughs> really yeah and you can probably tell when i'm a bit stressed out because i, I think i buy more marketing books <laughs> more, more things just to bury my nose in i have like two on the way right now <laughs> what, what are they uh software secrets and then shoes well it's always like I, i'm coming up against stuff like i need to learn more all right let's these books will help me <laughs> education gap and so what are the are you guys going to be kind of functioning as the same roles or are you guys going to have two different roles as this goes or oh we'll, we'll definitely probably have different, different roles yeah. figure out what's what the needs are and how to split them up and then just enrolling other people into taking on things too that's something i'm learning in a couple of programs i'm in for personal development is if you're trying to do it all yourself you and getting tired i said that wrong if you're getting tired you're doing it all yourself exactly so enroll other leaders in your movement get them willing and just stoked to be working with you and help like what you're creating so yeah. that's that's something i'm working on constantly it's is there a fear of they're not going to execute in a way that i think i want them to execute or they're not going to care as much as i do or like is there a hesitation in delegate or creating that or is it just Oh yeah, I come up against that constantly. I have a, a buddy who just called me on it recently, like uh, with this uh, event we're putting on for these foster kids. I was trying to just, anytime something new came up, oh, I'll do that, like I'll build a website for it. And I just kept jumping on all over everything. He's like, no, <laughs> dude, we, we have about 18 people that have stepped into roles for this. Tell them what to do. Like just tell them they need to do this and by when. Mm -hmm. uh, so learning to do that versus like, oh, well, I could do it. <laughs> yeah, it's tough, it's tough. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, like I said, I mean, I, 
this has only been around for like nine months that we've been in here um, or all together, but it's like I've never had a manager role before. And I've never managed anyone and all of a sudden. It's like, so learning to delegate is tough. Oh, yeah. It is tough. But one, once once it works out and all of a sudden it's just like, it's like, oh man, I wish I would have just done this a lot more sooner. <laughs> oh yeah. This is a dope spot, by the way. Thank you. Keep looking up at like the bobbleheads and the bushes. Anything, yeah. anything in particular that sticks out? Do you guys ever listen uh, to that? Is that up Bob's Burgers? The, yeah. Uh-huh. Tina? Yeah. <laughs> the whole family's up there. Uh, you, you mentioned earlier, like, people who don't like to, to give it away. Uh-huh. Uh, I immediately glanced up at Crushing It from Gary V. Because, like, that's his whole thing is just, like, give away your best stuff. Yeah. I mean, he's like, he's like, if you're not, you're going after the pennies. And look at him. He's got a, what, $150 million company? Yeah, in a couple of years. Yeah, I mean, that's the whole, it's funny, that's the whole premise of this podcast is like, I mean, it, as even our how-tos, like how, how all the how-tos, I mean, even my parents have said something like, hey, that's your, that's like, that's your intellectual property. That's, I mean, that's your secret sauce. Like, why would you get, and it's like, even if you do most of the, like even more and more people I'm working with, even if you give it to them, 99% aren't going to execute on it. And so that 1%, though, that 1% that does, they're going to see huge value. And even though they might not, Gonna, they might not bring you revenue directly. They're going to do it on their own or whatever it is. If someone else needs it, they're going to be a huge ambassador for you. So through them, it, they're going to refer so many other people. And it's, I mean, even other agencies in the Valley, like, wow, why are you doing that? But it's like, I, I think that it's just going to lead to more opportunity. Like, I don't, I don't want you to have to come to me just because it's, it's our secret sauce. I want you to know that like, it, there is no really secret sauce. It's just methodical. It's all laying it out. It's who are we talking to? What are we saying to them? What do we want them to do? And just using it. And then it's, it, there is no secret sauce. It's just taking time to set it all up, visualize it, map it out and just execute on it. And so it's like, it, it's, yeah, it's amazing when you give someone the keys and they realize how hard it is to turn those keys that it's like, they're going to come to you. And it's, it's going back to the mental side of things. I mean, it's like, how am I going to get mine if I'm giving it all away? And it's, it's a tough thing to wrap your mind around. Like, yeah, how am I gonna make money if I'm giving it all away for free? But it's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's leading to more and more opportunities. So it's cool. I mean, that's, yeah, it's, I think there's nothing but positive that can come if you give it all away for free. I agree. And that's something you want the most. You got to give it away. Like mm-hmm. the, to get what you want in this life is to help everybody else get what they want. And you find, for me, I found that it's not all the stuff that brings happiness. That's like a, a, a material solution for a spiritual abnormality. It all starts with the spiritual connection for me, like connection with source with listening for those intuitions, the things that come to us, right? There's all these modes like you and I meeting that is like Mm -hmm. divine, you know what I mean? And that's, that's what's missing too, is us trusting and believing that there's something bigger than ourselves out there. Like if we give it away, it's going to come back to us tenfold. That's their promises, you know what I mean? Not mine. And you don't do it for that reason. But when it starts to happen, you're like, you you believe more, you know, some people are like, Oh, I lost my faith. And I look at them, I say, consider you didn't lose your faith. We're all given the same measure of faith. You lost trust in the fact that someone that, you, you know, our parents gave us life, right. But our higher power is the one that, that allows us to live life more abundantly and see that like, it's not the money. Like there's a song that says some people are so poor, all they have is their money. And I truly believe that because everything that comes is a gift. And if you see it as a gift, then you can give that gift away and then it flows. That's what I mean. It's like someone with their hand closed with money. It's not going to, all they have is their money. All they have is this, this thing that's holding them rather than opening their hand and watching it flow and come back in with Mm -hmm. anything in life. You know what I mean? Mind, body, spirit. It's all, we're spiritual beings here experiencing this reality but if we lose sight of either one of them it's to our detriment so we have to have reality we have to have a base and we have to have something that calls us to do something more of ourselves or we just sit there and do nothing especially now with everything at our fingertips instant gratification everywhere it's like why are you doing that for me that it always has to be what is the purpose of this? Why am I doing this? If I can't see the purpose of doing it. And I was listening to Alan Watts the other day and he says, you ask yourself like who you are or what you want. And if you ask yourself what you want and you don't have an answer, it's either because you don't know who you are or you have everything you want. And right now the life I'm living in sobriety with giving back and doing all this, it's like, I have everything I want. You know what I mean? I have love. I have an amazing motorcycle. I get to go. I have this freedom where I wake up in the morning and look up and it's like, I'm not rushing to work. I'm not doing this. And I've already done that. I was a 
man, I went to school for engineering and was a field service technician for the Northern California area, did all this. And I realized that it was like, that was, I was a robot. You know what I mean? I didn't think for myself and that's what I'm, I'm learning to do now is like take time, pause in these situations and like really ask, you know, for help and, and it comes and it comes in the form of divine human beings because we're all just a part of God. That's, you know, he divided himself instantaneously. That's what it talks about. And it's like understanding that those intuitions that we get, if we take that action, that's where we learn, right? We can, I, I've studied so much stuff. I have so much knowledge. Like every book I read is like the same one. It's, but it's trying to get that same message across. And it's that it's all in us. You know what I mean? You have it all in you. You don't learn how to be a manager by study, or you don't, you know, experience jumping out of a plane by watching videos and doing all this. Mm-hmm. You actually, you can do all that, you know. And then when you're at the edge, you're like, <laughs> "Wow, that video didn't <laughs> explain how it's gonna feel right here." So it's like through those experiences and then our feelings about them, that's where we learn. You know what I mean? To like, oh, I don't want to do that anymore because it hurt this person. You know, not because someone told me not to do it or religion said, don't do this, don't do that. That doesn't work. That's like when people go crazy, me. But um, so like finding that balance and understanding that we're here to enjoy life, right? There's no anybody who judges us. I look at them, I say, hey, you know what? Have a good day, but you're not supposed to be here because, you know, my father doesn't judge me. So neither does my mom or the spirit of God. So it's like understanding that that's why we're here. We're here for others. We're here to be there for other people, trust God, clean house and help others in that order. For me, that's, that's what, that's what works. And that's the reason why, you know, when I hear about a veteran that takes his life or whatever, it just fires me up and I feel that. And it's like, man, I wish, you know, that I could be there, but then knowing that like, Hey, he's in a, he's in a better place. Yeah. Like there's no unforgivable sin. There's no, no like, there's always this moment that we're going to go back to source. There's no limitation in source and we go there and we get to choose again or not. And, um, knowing that brings peace and finding that peace, you know, allows me to let go of a lot of stuff that, um, used to hold on to, but without, stories, right? That's what is is like when you get to hear someone's story and they go through this healing, it heals us. Mm-hmm. Like we don't heal the wound, the wound heals us. And acknowledging the wound and bringing it out, you know, allows other people to have this vulnerable space to share and that's really where it is. It's like sharing those things, those secrets, we're only sick as our secrets. And as long as we hold on to those secrets, that's what's killing us. That's hell. You know what I mean? That's the enemy. So it's like, you can have that. That's what I want to be able to give to people. Like, you know, during the warrior meditation, people get stuff. And like I went and shepherded, which is where you get to give back what we were given so freely because the seats are free Mm -hmm. and save a warrior. Jake does all the work and everybody else does all the work to create those funds. That's why we want to raise money for them. And it gives people their life back. Like literally It allows me to be an amazing father for my son, to be able to have these conversations when he's young that I didn't have that was avoided, Mm -hmm. you know, um, and saw his discovery. And the recovery came from me in the rooms of AA and also in um, ACA, Adult Children of Alcoholics, and dysfunctional families. And part of the dysfunctional family is a militant father. So everyone that was in the military, how they raise their kids is Mm -hmm. it's propagating this dysfunction. And there is a way to to heal it and address it. And that's part of the whole meditation is teaching people to have a relationship with their higher power, with their, you know, source. And after you guys have done this, I mean, it, the whole mental side, have you guys noticed anything where maybe a situation comes at you that you guys handle it differently? Your perspective is a lot different than maybe say 12, 16, 18 months ago. Cause it's, I, I do as much as I can to try and work on the mental side of things. And it's crazy where I, I mean, three years ago, it, it's, there have been things that happened and now I look at it and it's like, I try and find the positivity in it. And then like, Hey, you know what had happened to your point, divine intervention. There's some, there's a reason why this happened, whether it doesn't make sense now, it might not make sense in a week, a month, a year, eventually it will. And it's funny, this actually just played out recently where right before, two days before we were going to put uh, money down on our, uh, um, wedding venue before we got married I was dealing with some IRS stuff and they went in and just took like nine grand out of a bank account and uh yeah and it's it it sucked at the time but I mean 
at the time it, it I told my wife or fiance at the time, like, you know, it, we'll figure it out. It's all going to work out, blah, blah, blah. And now we're in the process of getting a house. And it's like, if you have federal debt, you can't get a house. And so now I look back and it's like, if that wouldn't have happened, we'd be at a point now where we can, and it's just like, I could sit there and look at that like now and be like, this sucks. Life is horrible, but it's like, you know what? We'll figure it out. Life's going to go on. And it's funny. It came around full circle. Literally a couple days ago, we both sat there and thought, I was like, Hey, you know what? If we still had that, we wouldn't even be able to get this. So it's like, whenever you, you, you think you're down and getting kicked in the gut, it might actually be lifted up. And so I guess that was a long winded way of saying, have you experienced anything like that? Where it's like your perspective changes as hurdles get thrown at you. Yeah. This, this path is growing and this journey to heal is actually what it takes to actually heal. Like going in, doing the work, meditating daily, reading books, changing your perspective. It's changed so much for me. Like I, I go to bed at night and I sleep <laughs> like that, like that might sound small to maybe somebody listening, but I go to bed at night and I sleep like that's crazy Yeah. for like, because for years, not just months or anything, but years, it wasn't like that. Uh, so like that's huge. And I'm just, I'm pretty zen and calm all the time mm -hmm. i don't really get angry maybe a bit irritable at times which usually just means i'm tired mm -hmm. or hungry <laughs> 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 yeah but uh yeah i'm just so much more calm and like you said just in in the face of a problem it's just no problem like yeah. you know, well this is just something we work around either go around it go over it through it whatever you have to do but it it doesn't stress me out nice. like to where it used to. You've learned how to deal with adversity a little bit better. I mean, yeah. it's just, you don't dwell on it. You figure out how to mm -hmm. rise above. Yeah. And the awareness, the, the yeah. consciousness <laughs> of that, if something triggers me on the outside, it's really where I can go to work on the inside. And then learning to admit my faults and ask for forgiveness was super hard because like that's, that's weakness. And for men the biggest thing is like to appear weak mm -hmm. is not it that's super and you know the military you can't appear weak at all like that he said you'll get ridiculed i had the highest temperature on the boat because they injected us with the smallpox vaccine which i told them i'm like this isn't like i don't do well with this stuff yeah. and my the guys were like mad at me that i wasn't on watch that i was like near death they were gonna medevac me off the boat and they're still talking shit like they're like, Paul just wants to get out of watch. And yeah. I want to go yeah. kill those dudes. And it's I like, I said that too. <laughs> right, dude. And it's like, I'll trade with you, bro. I'll go stand up for our watch. I'm like dying right Look now. Paul faking his 103 <laughs> right. <feet>. right. <laughs> I mean, You have <laughs> real piece proof. Of shit. <laughs> That's some real mental toughness. Right. Mental strength right there. You can get and then you gotta have temperature above 100. <laughs> right. And then you gotta, like, you gotta deal with these guys like all the whole time, dude. You're like the only guys on the boat. So it's like, you, you secretly hate them. That's the resentment, which I'm learning, you know, and, but you got to work with them. And it's just like, God, like, these are not my friends, but you have that attachment. And there's no practice to like get through that. Now I can turn away from something. I'll, some, I still go through it like, man, I feel like I'm a weak dude. Like, I used to just stand up to anybody and tell them whatever, what's up. Now it's not worth it. You know what I mean? And it's not worth it, not only for me, but for that person, because, I've heard before I'm a scary guy, you know, and I don't want to be, but, um, if there's something that I, that I care about, there's an effective way to communicate that. Like I can, I can be angry and not act angry. I say, that really angers me. And before, <laughs> no, you wouldn't, <laughs> oh, I could just say that. I'm like, actually, and that's, I guess, more intimidating for some, you know, I don't, I'm, but it's like, just acknowledging my feelings and mm -hmm. what they really are. It's not just hate and love, you know, which it used to be. Um, it's, you know, hey, son, that's, you're really irritating me right now. That's very yeah. annoying. And I'm sorry that hurt your feelings that I said that, but <laughs> maybe you can learn to stop being annoying. And then allowing people to ha have their feelings, right? I'm not responsible for anybody's feelings. There's my problems, God's problems, and or my problems, your problems, and God's problems. And when I get stressed out, I'm like taking on God's problems and I am not God. <laughs> Thank God I'm not because uh, you guys would all be dead. <laughs> and being able to like laugh at this stuff, that would never happen. You know, like there's nothing. Rule 62, don't take life too seriously. And that's a big, huge thing for me because I used to be super serious all the time because I thought that I had to make all this stuff work. I thought I had to be, you know, this certain thing. And, um, 
you know, people pleasing and all that stuff. It's mm-hmm. like, it doesn't work. And it's so relieving when you step away from that. <laughs> Everyone. It's exhausting. Yeah. And then it's just like you stretch yourself too thin and then it's tough to actually execute a hundred percent on what you're pro- And it's just, yeah, it just, it's not a formula for long-term sustainability. Like it's just, yeah. 